Congratulations, you are watching the world premiere of the first video I'm recording both standing up and using the whiteboard as an educational tool. What are we talking about? We're talking about subject to transactions. This is the first video in a three-part series on subject to transactions. In this video, we are talking about the motivations. What motivation does a buyer have to do a subject to transaction? What motivation does a seller have to do a subject to transaction? All right, here we go. Uh, at the time we were recording this video, and we were recording this video in October of 2023, subject to transactions are a hot kind of uh, subject of interest, a hot subject of interest. The Wall Street Journal, even a few weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, ran an article about subject to transactions. Why are they a hot topic right now? Well, at the time we were recording this video, mortgage interest rates are a little higher than 7% right now. I'm just gonna use the 7% number to keep the math simple. Also, at the time we were recording this video, there are lots of owners of property, there are lots of sellers who own their property subject to, encumbered by, mortgages in the range of three to three and a half percent. I'm gonna use three to keep the math simple, three to keep the math simple. So why are they a hot transaction? Well, let's imagine a seller who owns a property that has a fair market value of $500,000. And they wanna sell the property for $500,000. And imagine that that seller owns that property with an existing mortgage an existing mortgage against the property for $400,000. So of course, one way that that seller could sell the property is they could sell it to a buyer who's willing to pay $500,000. That buyer is credit worthy enough to get their own mortgage from a third party lender. What do we call it a third party lender? Because the lender is not the seller. The buyer isn't dipping to their own funds. Those are two parties. They go out to a third party, neither of them buyer themselves, neither the seller, they go out to a third party, a mortgage company, a bank, they borrow the 400,000, they bring $100,000 of their cash to the transaction, and they buy the property for 500,000. That is a purchase in let's call it a conventional, a normal a, uh, a transaction that is not a subject to transaction. All right, what's a subject to transaction? A subject to transaction, is where the buyer essentially buys the property subject to this debt. The seller's existing debt does not get paid off. The buyer is buying the property subject to essentially the de facto obligation to make the payments on this loan because of course, if the payments on this loan are not made, the property will go into foreclosure. Whether the buyer agrees to make the payments or not, hint, hint, that's our next video. Our next video is about some of the technicalities of the jargon. Whether the buyer agrees to make the payments on the debt, we call that an assumption, or not, the buyer is going to need to make the payments on the debt, otherwise the lender holding that debt will foreclose. So the buyer agrees to take over payments on this debt they still bring in their $100,000 cash to purchase the property. And voila, that is a subject to transaction, subject to a lot more details and mechanics and practicalities later. All right, <clears throat> so uh, what's, what's the buyer's motivation to do a subject to transaction? Well, if the buyer goes out to a bank Right now, they're gonna get a mortgage at 7%. If this loan has a mortgage interest rate of 3%, it's a huge value add to the buyer to buy the property and take over an obligation to make payments on a mortgage that has a current balance of 400,000. By the way, that's a very important point. This 400K deed of trust mortgage, this $400,000 debt is the current balance. It's not the original balance. It's the current balance as of the time of the closing on the sale. It's a huge value add to the buyer to take over payments on a 3% mortgage rather than going out to the current market and getting a mortgage at 
7%. Another value add might be that the buyers might not be credit worthy enough to qualify for a new loan. One potential advantage to a buyer of doing a subject to transactions is they might find sellers who, for a buyer who can put down a 20% down payment, $100,000 is 20% of $500,000. For a buyer who can put down $20,000, that seller may be tickled to let that buyer who couldn't get a new loan, that seller may be, may be willing to sell uh, this property to the buyer for that amount. So two motivations, at least two motivations for buyers. Taking over a lower interest rate on the first mortgage. Another motivation for the buyer might be that they wouldn't otherwise be able to buy a property because that buyer would not be able to get a loan. And then actually there's a third motivation, the combination of those two in some cases. Okay, that's the motivation for the buyer. What's the motivation for the seller? After all, the seller might continue to have liability on this mortgage. Uh, what, what's the ad, ad, ad advantage to the seller in selling the property in a subject to transaction? Well, let me change the numbers. Let's imagine that the market value of the property is 500,000, and at the time the seller is trying to sell the property, the seller is, uh, owns the property subject to this $500,000 deed of trust. This is a transaction in which the seller is going to need to bring money to the close of the sale of the property unless the seller can do something called a short sale. Another topic, short sales. We're not talking about short sales. Um, because the transaction costs for selling these properties, it wouldn't be shocking if the transaction costs for the, the sale of this property was $30,000. The seller might need to bring, by the way, if we were smart, we would have tested out this highlighter before recording this, but the seller has negative equity, and I can't see that very well, but you can do the math. The seller would have to bring $30,000 to the close of the sale of this property. But if the buyer can take over a 3% mortgage in a 7% market, the buyer might be willing to pay $530 for the property so that the seller does not need to bring any money to the close of the sale of the property. That is often the motivation for the seller to sell a property in a subject to transaction the seller can sell the property for more money than they otherwise would had the buyer needed to go to the market and get a third party loan. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. You have made it to the end of our first video about subject to transactions. Remember, it's a complicated world out there. It's especially complicated about subject to transactions. We've only scratched the surface. Stay tuned and watch our second video. Catch you in the next one.